Hi, and welcome to part two of our discussion on modular programming. In this section, we'll learn about how to write your own functions, um, including function calls, function headers, function prototypes. So where we left off, we went through and we traced through the entire function, the entire main program, and how it called and, and uh, returned values from all the other functions. So let's take a closer look at how the main function calls those functions starting with the call to the get input function. Okay, notice that that function call is an assignment statement. So it's called by using an assignment statement and an assignment statement works by evaluating the right hand side and assigning the result to the variable on the left. So an assignment statement is pretty much like a calculation. Okay, in this case evaluating the right hand side gave us a value of 42. and we don't really have to worry about how that number gets back to main let's just say it returns a value a variable a value of 42 okay so here's the beginning of the function okay in C talk we call this a function header because it goes at the head of the function so every function header every function has a header that goes at the beginning you've already written one function header and that's void main we've done that for all of our programs well now we just have another one okay and some of those voids may not necessarily just be void all the time Okay, so this is a function header. And a function is like a mini program, so think about it as a black box. So in this case, we have a black box called get input. Um, in order to use a miniature program, you need to know what goes in and what comes out of it. So, get input. Well, the easiest part of the function header is the name, so we'll name it get input. Okay, and that's an identifier in CTOC. And just like variable names, it follows the same rules as variable names. So letters, digits only, it has to start with a letter, no spaces, all of that stuff. Okay, the next thing you have to think of is what comes out of this function? Well, what comes out of this is a floating point number. Okay, we're, we're asking the user to enter information and we're going to return it back to main and we're asking for a floating point number. So that's what comes out of this function. So that becomes the function's return type. Now, even though output is on the right-hand side of this box, we put the return type on the left of the uh, function header. Now, what comes into this function? Well, we don't send any information to get input. Okay, main doesn't send any information to it. It actually gets input from the user, but main sends nothing to get input. And C doesn't like the word nothing. It likes the word void instead. So wherever you have a nothing here, you have a void in parentheses. So get input takes no information from main, but returns a floating point value from main. So the name, the return type, and what information is sent to this function. So there's our first function header. Now let's take a look at the convert function. Okay, it's another assignment statement. So evaluates the right hand side, assigns the value, assigns the result to the variable on the left. Okay, here's our function header again, and so the question is, why do we have float here and float here? Think about that for a minute. Okay, so here's our mini program, our black box, if you will. Okay, so that's named convert, and it returns a floating point number. So our return type is float and it also processes information so the convert function needs us to send it a floating point number so what do you want me to convert and what should I convert it to so it takes a floating point number as input and returns a floating point number so the return type it returns a float value it takes a float as input and the name is convert so there's another function header now let's see how the main function calls the display function. Okay, we knew that the other ones were an assignment, they were called with an assignment statement because the functions returned information to main. The display function doesn't return anything back to main, so we don't have to assign anything. So we can call this function just by specifying its name and giving it an argument or the information that it needs in order to do its job. So, here's the header for the display function. So, the easiest part is naming it, so we name it display. Okay, the display function returns nothing. It doesn't send anything back to main, so its return type is void. 
the display function takes a floating point number as input. So we put a variable in here, declare it as a floating point number, and that's the information it's going to get from the function that calls it, from the main function. So there's our third function header. Now the header tells us how to call the function. So there is a direct relationship between the function call and the function header. So let's close, take a closer look at the getInput function. Okay, we have the name. The void means it doesn't take any arguments, so we don't put anything in parentheses when we call it. Leave the parentheses empty. Okay, the function's return type says it returns a floating point number. That means we need to have an assignment statement with a floating point variable on the left when we call it. Okay, and every function call ends with a semicolon. Here's the relationship between the convert function header and its function call. So again, we use the name of the function. The float says this function is expecting a floating point number. So what do we do? In parentheses, we have to put a floating point number. Okay, it can be an actual number, it can be a variable, but it has to be a floating point format. And since its return type is float, we know we're going to assign the result to a floating point variable, in this case Celsius. And of course it ends in a semicolon. So here's the display function and the relationship between its function call and the function header. So we start with the name display. Display needs a floating point number, so we're going to send it a floating point number. That means what's, what's the thing you want displayed. So in this case we're going to send it Celsius, so that's what goes in parentheses. And because the return type is void, we don't have anything to the left here. No assignment statement, no variable to the left. And a semicolon ends the statement. Now just as when we used variables we had to declare them, we also have to declare functions before we can use them. And we declare a function by using a function prototype. Function prototypes always appear before main, so here are your function prototypes. And the cool thing about a function prototype is, once you've written the function header, that's exactly the same as the function prototype. The only difference is the prototype ends in a semicolon. So once you've written the function header, just copy it, paste it over here, add a semicolon to the end of that. So there's the function headers that go at the head of each function, and here's the function prototypes that go, in, that go before main, and they end in a semicolon. Headers don't end in a semicolon because, remember, a semicolon marks the end of something, and that's not the end of the function. It's the beginning. So other than the semicolon, the function header and the function prototype looks exactly the same. So there you have several different types of functions, how to write them, and how to use them in your programs. Use these examples when you write your own modular programs. Print the handout that I have posted uh, online for you, and make sure you use these examples. There's an example of everything you need for every program you're going to write in this class. See you next time.